In 2017, the City of Melbourne approached us to work on a project that wound up being called Women in the Life of the City. What they were recognising was that street naming was largely for men. Um, the majority, over 90% of streets in Melbourne are named after men um, and they were wanting to turn that around and they asked us to do some research to find some notable women of Melbourne um, and I worked with an incredible volunteer of ours, her name is Megan Rosado um, and we put together a booklet of 26 notable women um, and Lisa Balia was one of them and hence this wonderful project. Lisa was a pretty large figure in the Aboriginal community of Melbourne. She was a qualified social worker. She worked at the University of Melbourne, supporting um, Aboriginal students to get through uni and was involved in lots of um, community organisation in terms of especially the stolen generations, but was also a broadcaster, a radio broadcaster and photographer. So she was at every community event, interviewing people, taking their photos and, you know, getting people to speak out about the issues that are important to Aboriginal people, making sure that Aboriginal people's voices were heard and making sure that Aboriginal people were represented in photography for how we really are, not how the stereotypes of us are. She was the benchmark of a multidisciplined individual that confronted a lot of her own um, history uh, with full force. But she was also very uncomfortable around how that narrative is shared. I'd say also she was eccentric um, and she epitomised the values of reciprocity um, and sharing was something that she constantly did with her photographs. Um, and if I had one image in my head, and it's been an image in my head since the beginning, it's always Lisa on her bike. She rode her bike everywhere. We've asked Charlotte Allingham to um, create some works that reflect Lisa's life so that people know who she is. And we're really excited to have young women be doing the artwork because um, Lisa, who's sadly no longer with us, always championed Aboriginal women, young people, and her poetry and um, other writers. Timma Ball is um, uh, represented in here in the lame way with a photo essay, a visual essay. So I think she would be thrilled that young women's um, work is being seen through this project. As an artist, um, it's really nice to be able to do work and be involved celebrating someone who's so close to this community and working with people who knew her was really nice because I got to as in like a insider glimpse into her personality through the people who actually knew her and grew with her. For me I always have um, Lisa in the back of my head um, really pushing me to take opportunities and um, raise my voice. She made us remember how strong we are and what we're capable of as well. The whole idea of celebrating Lisa Belair was to kind of encourage people, especially the Aboriginal community um, who may not have known her, that there is a way to be good in the world, to be productive, to be, um, to be able to contribute. Like, I really would like people to understand that's what Lisa did and that's what a lot of community people did and, 
and not to see this as a sort of memorial but as an inspiration to keep contributing and participating in the community and keep you know fighting for justice for Aboriginal people.